When we start playing Go, very often we play using Japanese rules. And then we explain something using Japanese terms. And we study from Japanese books. And we talk about Japanese professionals. Now, why is that? The game was invented in China. Let's find out how this happened. The game of Go really originated in China, some 4,000 or maybe even 5,000 years ago, which makes it one of the oldest intellectual games in the world. But it wasn't always as we know it today. The shape and size of the board and the grid changed over the years. There were some experiments with the initial setups of stones, and even the stones themselves, believe it or not, used to be square and made out of wood, until someone decided that wood was simply too light as a material. But for the sake of our story, let's skip several thousand years forward to 8th century AD, when the famous Japanese minister Kibi, who spent almost 20 years living in China, finally came back home to Japan, and with him he brought many of the elements of the Chinese culture. Books, manuscripts, inventions, and the game of Go. Historians are not quite sure that this is exactly how it happened, but what's more important here is that Go finally found its way into Japan. And it quickly became very popular, not only with aristocracy, but also with common folk. And even the samurai were seen playing it. What Japan is deservedly proud of is that they made the game start the way we play it today, with an empty board, not with some prearranged board positions. Very soon, the first Japanese Go masters appeared. And it was not uncommon at the time for aristocrats to have their personal Go teachers. But let's fast forward some more because the wheels of Go history started turning very quickly around the 16th century, when the Japanese war commander and politician Toyotomi Hideyoshi decided to hold a big unifying tournament to determine who the strongest player in Japan was. So he called upon all the strong players and they came and they played. The winner was a Buddhist monk named Nikkai. He was now declared the master or Meijin in Japanese and all the other players now had to take handicap when playing against him. It was also now possible to establish a ranking system according to his strength. Nikkai also received a state salary and a very nice plot of land, so he now became a full-time Go teacher and player. It was also around this time that the four major Go schools of Japan were founded. The first one was called Hanimbo, and there was an unspoken agreement that this school was the most influential and powerful of them all. Nikkai became the leader of the school. The three others were Yasui, Hayashi and Inoue, and all four of the schools were located in Edo, which is modern-day Tokyo. As soon as the schools were founded, they started a countrywide search for talented players. And all of this gave birth to a plethora of brilliant players of that time. And all the strongest players received government support. They all had salaries, so they were the true Go professionals. They could dedicate their entire lives to playing, teaching, and studying the game of Go. This government support and competition between the players and the schools led to many advancements in the game theory. A lot of the variations that were developed at that time, 400 years ago, are still widely used today by amateurs and professional players alike. There was another very interesting state position that was established at the time. It was that of Godokoro. You could describe him as a Go minister, someone in charge of all of the Go affairs in the country. And the amount of power and control that this person now had was truly unprecedented. He was in charge of playing with the foreign visitors and teaching the emperor himself. He was responsible for organizing the famous castle games to be played in front of the emperor. And he distributed the salaries and scholarships. He also appointed the ranks. So it was the dream of every strong player at the time to achieve this position. Countless tricks and behind-the-curtain manipulations were done in order to obtain it. Needless to say that each and every one of those episodes could serve as a topic for a separate and very interesting lecture. Actually, we've made a couple of courses about some of the most exciting events from Go history, and they're available right here on Go Magic. And we'll definitely get back to some of those topics in the future. For now, let's just say that that was the truly golden age of Japanese Go, and it lasted nearly 300 years. But as anything else, it wasn't destined to last forever. It all ended in 1868, when the shogunate fell and what we know as the Meiji Restoration began. The government simply didn't have time to worry about Go players anymore. So all of the support and salaries 
or cancelled in an instant. Go players for the first time now had to struggle to make a living to survive. Many brilliant Go players at the time died in poverty. It was a dark time for Japanese Go, but there was also something positive in this. For the first time, Japan changed its external policy. It opened its doors to the West. And finally, we learned what kind of country Japan really was. We discovered its traditions, its culture, and the game of Go. Go came to the West, to Europe and the United States at the beginning of the 20th century. At that time, the strongest Japanese players were still automatically considered the strongest in the world. So naturally, it was the players from Japan who brought the game to the West. And they taught the game using Japanese terms, Japanese rules, and Japanese books. And even the name of the game itself, the Western name Go, is a derivative from the Japanese name Igo. And that's how it happened that originally a Chinese game became known as a Japanese game in the West. This Japanese dominance started to slowly fade away and diminish around the 1960s. And now today, the balance of power in the world of Go has shifted greatly. It's all very different now, but that's going to be another story. And this little history lesson is over. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.